Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. This week we are painting up Australian Judge model. This is going to be from the old Mongoose setting when they actually produced some great models from the other mega cities. But where is Oz? Well, of course, it's in the post war Australia and it's dominated by the Sydney, Melbourne, Conurb mega city, though there are several other cities that still exist. And the rest of the country is known as the Rad Back and is a vast nuclear desert. Ozers, as they are known, uh, uh, laid back and pretty irrelevant in most of the timeline. They seem super like relaxed on everything, even their judges are pretty relaxed wearing vests, shorts, t-shirts. They don't really seem to take life too serious down there. They even have the catchphrase that they'll take anyone. They don't really care. As long as you're laid back, you could probably enter the Justice Department. But weirdly, even though Judge Dredd seems to believe they're undisciplined, they are highly effective at what goes on. Their uniform is pretty unique as well. Like I said, they wear shorts. So our judge that we're going to be painting today, he is in a pair of shorts. They also go for a green, white, orange color scheme, which is a bit reminiscent of their flag, I guess. Yes. So let's dive in. Okay, so this Oz Judge, we're keeping it simple. We are going to call him Bruce. Even believe the little model. There is a name on there. Looks a little bit like Bruce. So that's what we're going to go with. Look at that. He's undercoated black and then a very heavy white dry brush over him just to give him some shading for the speed paint to grab onto. You know how it is. We're going to kick things off with Crusader skin. We're going to use this on his face and legs. He has this little bit of chin showing. So we'll quickly splodge some on there. Very quick, very painless. And then of course we've got to get under those shorts. This model's hilarious, the fact that they have shorts on. It's so comical. Only in the world of Judge Dredd would uh not only would the police force be wearing like fake leather body suits they'd also of course have leather shorts for the australians i don't think none of the other hot countries that have been shown in judge red have shorts it is purely australia it feels like it's purely a dig at the australians so i don't know why they decided to go that route with them. Yeah, very quick, very simple stage. Right, time to tackle the, the biggest part of the model. So the uniform, we're gonna use Absolution Green. It's hard to tell if it's a super dark green or if it's black with a hint of green. So I'm just going safe and picking this dark green that I guess was designed for, I don't know, your Dark Angels slash Rangers of Middle Earth. It's a very nice foresty green colour and the camera is zooming perfectly onto my hand. Let's see if I can just fix that a little. There we go. Just get my hand out of the way. That seems to fix all problems. So I'm just putting this on quite heavily. As you can see on the model, there's a lot of detail. They've put a lot of wrinkles into his uniform. So really I just have to make sure I'm getting the paint into those recesses and it will do the rest for me. There is some fiddly aspects to this uniform though. As you'll see on the jacket, obviously you have the yellow badge, the shoulder pads, he's got white gloves, plus there's a white stripe going down the center of his jacket. So we'll come back in a minute when I've got a bit more paint on and see how I'm doing. And we are back, I'm just finishing up this arm it was a bit of a pain trying to delicately not catch all these areas that need to stay slightly white but i think we got there I'm just catching a few pieces i've missed can always go back with some white paint and clean up any errors i've made as we know there's always errors but look how green he is i like it i'm liking it a lot the next stage is very quick i'm using cloud burst blue and it's going to be purely going on his helmet visor like I said, this is a very quick stage, so if you blink, you will miss. And splodge. Oh, missed a bit. Splodge. Double splodge. Maybe a third splodge. Let's go again. Now at this point, I'm referencing the image from the beginning of this video. 
And it looks like his cap that's on top, that's part of the helmet, is actually dark green as well. Not entirely sure if the whole helmet is dark green. It looks black further down, so I'm just going to say it's the top. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to go off imagery that I've seen. And God, is this fiddly. I didn't realize there was another yellow badge that has to stay white up top. The actual uh, bill of the hat, I guess that's what you call it, the bill. It's a lighter green than the comic. Now that could just be a highlighting choice of the artist, or it might actually be a lighter green. So I'm going to use a different color there. So I have to be careful not to catch it. Now we're moving on to hardened leather. Again, another quick, easy section of the paint. It's going to be just his boots. And as we know, boots are important. They need to be one size too small to make sure you don't get used to the idea of being a judge in a mega city. That was the classic line that Judge Dredd was taught by one of the senior judges. If you spend more time worrying about the boots that are too tight on your feet, you got less time to worry about the fact that you're crushing democracy and that you're basically a dictatorship. I feel that idea <laughs> is terrifying in the early comics. I understand in the later ones, Dread has actually started getting a bit more anti the establishment and a bit more pro freedoms. But yeah, the idea that Oh, you're having these thoughts of democracy? Better pick a smaller size boot. <laughs> it just seems so stupid. But sadly realistic at the same time. Ugh. Gonna get his belt whilst we're here. This is the only section of the belt that you can see. Uh, I'm gonna pick out the pouches in the same colour as his shoulder pads and knee pads which we are gonna now clean up all the messes I've made. Like I said, contrast paint, you're always gonna make a mess. It's, it flows really quickly. It doesn't take a lot of excuses to run somewhere that it shouldn't have. So I'm just gonna clean up its socks. And once we've got that done, we can move on to the next stage. And that next stage is gonna be a zealot yellow. There's not actually a lot that needs yellow. So as you're going to see, we rattle through some colors quite quickly. But ultimately we're looking at the cap badge and his uh, shoulder badge. And then his chest one. Once again, I'm not sure. It kind of looks like three quarters of a circle in a stylized shape. It's obviously got some reference to Australia that I don't understand. And uh, I do apologize if you know the reason for it, drop me a comment. And whilst you're there, hit like and subscribe. It does help. At this stage, I would say we're about halfway through. So I'm now grabbing the grim black. And we're going to use that predominantly on the helmet that I think is black. And his pistol. I don't know what they're armed with. I haven't found reference to it. Is it a lawgiver or is it something else? So if I use this model in the Warlord game setting, he's going to just be armed with the standard lawgiver that everyone has. I assume that if he's on a cultural exchange program, they gave him one instead of his pistol. And for the RPG game, it'll be a Mark 1. Whilst in Warlord Games version, it's going to be a Mark 2. It's quite nice having two different game systems set in slightly different times to each other. The Games Workshop RPG is very heavy into the 80s. So we only have the Mark 1 Lawgiver on up as an option. Whereas Warlord Games is set slightly later after the Mark 2s have come into play. So I get to have a little bit of fun messing around with ideas as I'm creating my settings. These leg lines, I hate doing lines with contrast paint. Especially when the paint just wants to find those recesses. You have to really watch out because it would have ran into the leg very quickly. And now we are on to the pistol. This is a bit easier than those annoying legs. I just get to load up the brush and slap it on. As you can see, it slightly ran into his finger, but we can blame that on shadow when we get to the final end. And of course, I missed a little bit of flash on the nozzle, which I chopped off later, but 
I didn't even notice that until I was doing the photography. I think I've said it before, it doesn't hugely matter me, it doesn't take me out of the game, it doesn't take me out of the setting. If things like that really bothered me, I'd also be drilling out barrel holes. I ain't that type of person. I like slapping paint off and playing games. Hopefully you enjoy that too. I assume you do, that's why you've watched so far into this video. If you've made it this far, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And let me know if you want to see me building a gorilla gang rule wise for Warlord games. I've got some gorillas that I think I could make a video out of that would be interesting. So let me know in the comments if you want to see it. And while you're doing that, we will move on to the fire giant orange. This is going to be his knee pads, elbow pads and shoulder pads and the pouches around his belt. And just like everything else, I'm just loading up the brush, splodging it down, let the paint do what it's meant to do. I don't need to particularly tell it where to go. It knows what it's got to do. It knows where it's got to go. So I'm just going to leave it to get on with it. All right, we are going to speed through this process a little bit just because I'm running out of things to talk about to do with Australia unless we start talking about 1990s Neighbours and Home and Away but I'm not sure we want to go down that route just yet you guys don't know me well enough to want to dig into that part of my life so we'll just keep skipping forward we're now onto the shoulder pads going through one arm at a time as you can see it's not a bright orange the one thing I like about this orange contrast, the Games Workshop one seems to be a lot brighter when you put it on, whereas this one, it's a richer, warmer orange. I'd almost say it's like a reddish brown instead of straight up bright orange. I really like it because when I use it on my Clegg's spacesuit, for example, I can then go over with a super bright orange and I get like double layers of shadow whereas on this model it looks very realistic it's not in your face could be actually mistaken for brown from a distance it's only when you get closer to it that you start noticing the reddish hues that are coming through but it's really nice i really like the color it's got a great warmth to it and with these final few pouches on the way to being done we can pretty much call the model there. You can be brave and go a few more steps if you wanted to. But personally, I'm quite happy with the, the result I'm pulling off here. So I think I'm going to stop before I mess it up. Because the last thing I need to do is be stupid and make a very silly error. So get these leg parts done and... There we go, I'm pretty happy, I'm going to let this dry, finish up the base, and then I'll take some photos for you. See you in a bit. 